Well, hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. I hope you had a good time over the Easter break. I wonder if you got any eggs. And did anything hatch out of your eggs? We've been looking at how and why stories, which are tales people make up to explain why something is the way it is, like how the stars got into the sky. The story this week is one I made up, so I suppose you could say it's from England. And it's all about why crocodiles cry when they eat and why they sleep with their mouths open. It begins with a girl who finds an egg at school. A real egg rather than a chocolate one. The trouble with finding an egg is you never know what's going to hatch out of it. It might be a dinosaur, a dragon, a giant snake or a little chick. Before we begin the story, can you have a think about what you'd like to hatch out of your secret egg while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Hello, super great kids. What would you like to hatch out of your egg? Did you have a think? I wonder if it was a giant snake or a dinosaur or maybe even a dragon or a unicorn. Do unicorns hatch out of eggs? So, are you sitting comfortably? Shall we begin? How do we start a story? That's right, I say mouth open and you say story jump. Are you ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. Here it comes, here it comes. Once upon a playtime, Priya was digging in the sandpit when guess what she found? An egg. It was smooth and white and heavy. It felt exciting. Should she keep it? Would you keep it? Well, she quickly slipped it in her pocket and forgot all about it. Halfway through her phonics lesson, Priya heard a loud crack in her pocket. When she put her hand in, something bit it. Ow! Priya, please concentrate, frowned Miss Beaky. Later in the toilets, Priya looked in her pocket and out popped a perfect tiny crocodile. It had green sleepy eyes, triangular teeth and eggshells stuck to its tail. Are you my mum? squeaked the crocodile. No, I'm not your mum, whispered Priya rather startled. What are you doing in my pocket? My teacher won't like it. We're not allowed toys in school. Oi, I'm not a toy. Let me out, I want to play. No, said Priya. You're not allowed in our classroom. Miss Beaky has lots of rules and no crocodiles in school is definitely one of them. Look, why don't you hide in my pocket till lunchtime and I'll let you out in the pond. OK, 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 grumbled the crocodile. But what will you give me for being good? You can share my chocolate bar at lunch, said Priya, shoving the crocodile back in her pocket and zipping it closed. Oi! Chocolate? came a muffled squeak as Priya hurried to catch up with her class. Have you ever been to a music lesson with a crocodile in your pocket? It is so not fun. Just as Sunflower Class was singing Three Little Speckled Frogs, Crocky Wocky began to sing his own song. This little crocky once is jockey, this little crocky once is jockey, snippy snappy happy clappy droppy jockey in my mouth. The teacher glared at Priya, who put her hand carefully in her pocket and clamped her croc's jaws closed. But that did not stop him trying to sing. Luckily, before you could say snicky snacks, it was time for lunch. 
in the lunch hall. Priya unzipped her fleece pocket and outshot her croc underneath the table. He had grown from a tiny baby croc to a medium-sized croc bigger than two rulers. Where's that chocolate you promised? What is chocolate anyway? What is chocolate? gasped Priya. <gasps> Only the best thing to eat in the whole world. Right, hand it over, said the little crocodile, his green eyes glowing. Well, that's a bit rude, thought Priya, opening her lunchbox. And she was just about to explain that you have to eat your apple and your main course before you start your pudding when... Snip, snap, snippity, snap. Crocky Wocky snatched and swallowed all of Priya's chocolate bar, wrapper and all. Mmm, you're right, chocolate is good. Give me more. And little crocodile was so pleased, he did a little dance under the table. This little crocky wants his jockey, this little crocky wants his jockey. Snippy, snappy, happy, clappy, droppy jockey in my mouth. Priya's mouth was opening and closing like a fish. She was just about to shout, Little crocodile, you can't do that. You have to share. When Crocky Wocky spotted Priya's friend Sam. In a flash, little crocodile was up on the lunch table and snip, snap, snippity snap. Sam's chocolate brownie was guzzled, gulped and gone. And even worse, Priya's secret was out. There was a medium-sized crocodile running along the lunch table in the hall for everyone to see. And what a hullabaloo it caused. The dinner lady screamed, the caretaker hollered, and all of Sunflower class chanted. We're so cool, there's a crocodile in our school. We're so cool, there's a crocodile in our school. Just then, Miss Beaky came running into the lunch hall. Sunflower class, sit down, she yelled. But Crocky Wocky had the scent of chocolate in his nostrils and there was no stopping him. First, he found the puddings and snip, snap, snippity, snap, all the brownies were gone. Next, he drank all the chocolate custard out of the big jug, glug, glug, glug. He even found the teacher's hot chocolate and slurpity slurp, burpity burp, in an instant he guzzled down the lot. Everyone was going crackers. The caretaker was chasing Mr Crocodile, the dinner ladies were waving their spoons, sunflower class were chanting, We're so cool, there's a crocodile in our school. We're so cool, there's a crocodile in our school. And Priya was saying to herself, Don't panic, Priya, don't panic, think. Then she had an idea. Ding! She stopped running and pulled out another bar of chocolate, kept strictly for emergencies. She ran into the empty playground and shouted, Cooey! Mr Crocodile! Come and get your chalky walky! Sulking in the sandpit was, you guessed it, Crocky Walky. Priya noticed that he had grown from a medium crocodile to an exceedingly large crocodile and his triangular teeth looked like miniature mountains. She held out her chocolate high, high, high above her head. Cooey, Mr Crocodile, come and get your chalky walky. And very slowly, Crocky Wocky shuffled towards her on his stumpy little legs, singing sadly to himself. This little crocky wants his chalky, this little crocky wants his chalky. Snippy, snappy, happy, clappy, droppy jockey in my mouth. Now, it could have been a happy ending if Priya's teacher hadn't come into the playground just at that moment and shouted, Oi, Priya, no, inside, now. Miss Beaky marched over to Priya and reached out to take her chocolate. Was that a good idea? Nope. You're right, that was not a good idea. As all children know, rule number one is never get in the way of a hungry crocodile. Mr Crocodile opened his mouth wide, wide, wide 
and snip, snap, snippity, snap, he swallowed Priya's teacher whole. Mr. Crocodile, what have you done? You can't swallow my teacher. That's really rubbish, exclaimed Priya. OK, OK, OK. But she was being all shouty and annoying, sulked Mr. Crocodile. You can't just eat people because they're being annoying. You tell them why you're cross, you ask them what they can do to make it better, and then you wait a bit. Now what are we going to do? asked Priya. We'll have no one to teach us to read, and, and I, I might even have to leave school, and... OK, 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 said Mr Crocodile. Teachers don't taste as good as chocolate anyway. I could spit her out if you promised to give me more chocolate. Priya nodded, sniffing. So Crocky Wocky took a deep breath and... <laughs> Miss Beaky shot across the playground and landed on the cushions in the reading corner. Miss Beaky wiped the crocodile spit off her glasses. Priya Sethna, she said a little shakily. Rule number one, no crocodiles in the school. Take that away now. And Crocky Wocky, who was learning quickly, said, OK, 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 miss, I'll, I'll go, but I need a deal. Number one, let me come to sunflower class so I can learn to read. And number two, let me have chocolate whenever I want it, and I promise I won't swallow you ever again. Well, said Priya's teacher, backing towards the classroom door, we should be able to arrange for the reading bit so long as the rest of Sunflower class agree. But, crocodile, you cannot have any more chocolate. Just think of the toothache you'll get with all that sugar on all those teeth. That is a definite no for chocolate, not for crocodiles to eat ever. And that, by the way, is a new school rule. Well. Crocky Wocky was not very pleased, but he really, really wanted to learn to read, so reluctantly he agreed. OK, 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 OK. It's a deal, Mrs Beale. I, I mean Miss Beaky. As long as I can sit next to Priya. And that is how sunflowers came to have a crocodile in their class. And that is why Priya went home that night with a crocodile in her school bag. And if you're lucky enough to see crocodiles lying on a riverbank sleeping, look very carefully and you'll notice they've usually got their mouths open. And that is because they're dreaming that someone might just be about to pop in a delicious chocolate bar. And that is why, to this very day, crocodiles cry real crocodile tears when they're eating. And that is because they're remembering the taste of delicious chocolate, which a certain teacher in England banned them from eating ever again. Poor old crocky Wocky. Snip, snap, snout. That story is out. Thank you for listening, especially all of you in Liverpool in the UK. I wonder if you could make up a how and why story. Why do you think crocodiles sleep with their mouths open or cry when they're eating? If you like that story, you might like some of our other how and why stories from earlier in the podcast. My favourites are why the snakes have poison and why the sky is far away and how the stars became... Now, it's time for me to dip into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. First of all, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all of our subscribers. You are helping us to keep making this podcast. A big thanks to Kofi subscriber Catherine for your donation. And to Patreon and Apple subscribers Elsie, who is three, and Tavi, who is four and a half, from Oakland in California, 
and Bianca, who is eight, from Santa Cruz in California, and seven-year-old Delphine from France and her baby sister Eva, and Hazel, who is six. Let us know if you're a subscriber and if you'd like a mention. If you'd like to give a one-off donation of any amount on Ko-fi or subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get bonus stories, early access and advert-free, then go to our website on supergreatkidstories.com or go to Apple Podcasts. And thanks for some really lovely reviews to Nora, who is nearly nine, and to Bella, who is eight, and to Willow, who is nine. Thank you for those reviews. Now, lots of you have been drawing and sending wonderful pictures of our stories for us to share on our Facebook page. So, here's some thank yous to super great kids who've been sending in your pictures. Thanks to Toby, who is seven, from Greenwich Village in New York City, who drew and labelled a well-observed picture of the stick woman, complete with a wolf, a tiger and a monkey. Toby's siblings, Cashel, who is four, and Rosie, who is three, also like listening to super great kids' stories and helped Toby decide which picture to draw. Thanks, Toby. Really great work. And seven-year-old Pablo from Arkansas and living in Mexico has drawn a very stylish picture of the rainbow snake. Thanks so much, Pablo, for your beautiful picture. It's super great. And Pablo's brother Lucas, who is eight, has drawn the tiger from The Tiger, the Boy and the Jackal. Lucas, what a marvellous tiger, with all his rather grand markings. Just brilliant. Thank you both. Over to Atlanta in Georgia now, and thanks to Reed, who is almost six and has drawn a super great picture of why the whale has a sad song. I love your whale, singing his song with the musical notes floating upwards and the eagle with his powerful talons. One of my favourite tube stories, Reed. Thank you for sharing your picture of it. And seven-year-old Katja from Malaysia, who is living in Qatar, has sent an enchanting picture inspired by the magical story The Fish and the Star. Thank you, Katja. A beautiful and moving depiction of that story, all about friendship and longing. And storyteller Kate Corkery was visited at a live storytelling session in London by Super Great Kid Stories fans Josh and his sibling Frankie. They presented Kate with two pictures of her stories. Thank you, they are just great. I'm glad you could make it along to see some live storytelling. And Elsie, who is three, has drawn a really accomplished picture of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack has a jaunty red feather in his cap and a huge smile on his face. Thanks for sharing your fabulous picture, Elsie. Keep up the drawing. And thanks to six-year-old Taylor from Pennsylvania, who's drawn a fun and lively picture of Molly and the leprechaun. I love your cheeky little leprechaun, all dressed in green, Taylor. Just brilliant. And Oscar, who is six, has drawn a great picture of the blind man and the hunter. I love the way you've coloured all the sky and the grass so that you've covered the entire page. Thanks so much for sharing it, Hunter. And thanks to five-year-old Matilda living in Byron Bay in Australia for her picture of a smiling rainbow snake. I wonder how you'd tell your version of this story, Matilda. And over to Theo, who is four, from Virginia in the United States, who's drawn a fun picture of Tianje with her friends. I particularly like the fact that you've drawn it on our Super Great Kids colouring book page with the story owl at the bottom. I hope you're enjoying colouring the pictures. I'm impressed that you've listened to all of our stories, Theo. Amazing! And thanks to five-year-old Matilda in Oregon for your energetic picture of the snake's sister. I love the way you've written your name with lots of curly ends on the letters. I wonder, Matilda, if you could try talking like the snake sister with lots of hissing. And Olive, who is six, has made a really creative montage picture of Baba Yaga's breakfast. It's very creative and it just sparkles. Thanks for sharing that, Olive. And thanks to Sid, who is seven, for a clever picture of Bikku Bai and the coconut. I love the way Bikku Bai is bartering for the price of a coconut. 
marvellous. I can tell you've paid a lot of attention to the story, Sid. Great listening. If you'd like to see these pictures, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. That's it for this week. Keep telling those stories to anyone who'll listen. I'll see you next week. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. 